All right, this is going to be part two of the shapes review, volumes of prisms and cylinders. We're going to go ahead and uh, give you a second to jot that down. Press pause in the video. That's going to finish up the notes on the back side. Uh, I'm going to assume you already did that, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. It says that the volume uh, is a quantity expressing how much is required to fill a three-dimensional shape. So if you look at this shape, like let's say this was a box, how much liquid I can put into this box before it completely fills up with water, okay? So that's what a volume is. It's different from an area. An area is a flat space, right? A, a volume, now you're talking about three dimensions. So we're gonna be using this formula over and over and over again today. It says that the volume is equal to the area of the bottom times the height. Now, I like to leave it like this in general because this formula will take care of lots of formulas. Instead of learning like four different formulas, you're just going to learn this one. Um, volume, you need to find the area of the bottom and then multiply it by the height. Now, when we're talking about prisms like this, okay, prisms and cylinders, it's very important that the bottom shape, whatever's on the bottom, matches perfectly with whatever the top shape is. And you're going to look at these and you're going to say, well, of course it does. Like, look at all these. This triangle down here that's on the floor matches with the triangle on the top. And this circle down here matches with the circle on the top. And all of those are true, except for this one, right? Like over here, if you were to kind of picture this, it'd be a rectangle down here that's kind of flat and like just an edge up there. So we'll, we'll attack that one uh, once we get to it, all right? But very important that the bottom matches with the top. That way you can find the area of the bottom. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find the area of the bottom. So first, let's, let's go ahead and write down the formula. I'm trying to find the volume of this rectangular prism. So I know that for the volume, the formula is area of the bottom times the height which means I need to find the area of the bottom first, okay? The bottom shape, so important that we understand that that bottom shape is a rectangle. So before I move on with this problem, I first need to find the area of that rectangle. And I'm gonna do this kind of off to the side. I like to call this side work. Why? Because it's done on the side. Before I really do this, I need to find the area of that bottom piece, right? That, that bottom piece is a rectangle, so I need to find the area of the rectangle first. The area of the rectangle, the formula for area of a rectangle is base times height. And in this case, the rectangle has a base of 14 and a height of 7. So I get to write that it's 14 inches times 7 inches. So the area of this rectangle, 14 times 7, I get 98. And remember, this really should be 98 inches squared. Okay, I found the area of the bottom. The area of the bottom is going to be 98 inches squared. So when I start using my formula, I'm going to write volume equals the area of the bottom we just said was 98 inches squared. So I get to replace that with 98 inches squared. And I'm going to multiply it by the height of that box. The height of this box is going to be this length right here from top to bottom, which is 12. So I'm going to go ahead times 12 inches. The volume is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and multiply 98 times 12. And that gives me 1,176. I'm going to multiply inches squared times inches. I'm going to do this on the side one time just so you can see it. Uh, inches squared times inches really means inches times inches times inches, which means you have three of those things. You're going to get inches cubed. So the volume is going to be 1,176 cubic inches. And that's it. We're done. Okay, so uh, first you need to find the area of the bottom and then multiply it by the height of the figure. Let's try it again. We're going to go ahead and do it for this first one, uh, for the second one. I'm going to find the volume of this triangular prism. Um, to find the volume of this triangular prism, I'm going to go ahead and use the formula V equals area of the bottom. times the height. 
In order for me to do this though, I need to find the area of the bottom first. The, the bottom shape is this triangle right here. This is where students might get a little confused. Remember, there's a 90 degree angle right there. And the, if I were to match up the numbers, this is four inches, this is three inches, and this is five inches. So I need to find that area of that triangle first, okay? Because that's the thing that's on the bottom. Area of a triangle, remember that the formula for that from uh, the last notes is base times height divided by two. I need to find my base and I need to find my height. Remember I said that the base and the height of a triangle are always going to be touching those 90 degrees. So it's going to be the four is your base and the three is your height. It doesn't matter if you switch them. Like if you say, oh no, the base is three and the, and the height is four. What does matter is that you use the three and the four and you do not use the five. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start substituting these. I got four inches times three inches divided by two. What am I going to do that with that five? Nothing. It's a distractor for right now. The area of the triangle is 12 inches squared divided by two, which means the area of this triangle is six inches squared. I just found that the area of the bottom is six inches squared. What do I get to do with it? Well, I get to take that six inches squared because it's the area of the bottom. I get to plug it in right here now. Okay. So now I can go ahead and continue with my formula. V equals the area of the bottom is six inches squared. And I'm going to multiply it by the height of this overall figure. The height of this overall figure is from the bottom triangle to the top triangle, which is going to be six inches. That means the volume is going to be six times six, which is 36. Inches squared times inches is inches cubed, just like we said last time. And we are done with that one. All right, next one. We're going to be dealing with a cylinder. Technically, a cylinder is not a prism, but it behaves like one, okay? So it's going to use the same formula. We're still going to find the area of the bottom, and we're going to multiply it by the height in order for us to uh, find this volume. So let's go ahead and start with that formula. V equals area of the bottom times the height. But in order for me to do this, I need to find the area of the bottom. Uh, that bottom shape. Is a circle. I know it looks like a uh, like a like an oval, but remember you're looking at this in a three dimensional way, um, which means if I'm going to find the area of that circle on the bottom, I should be using the formula area of a circle equals pi r squared. I can only use this formula if I know the radius, and the radius is not 14. Remember that. The radius starts from the center and goes to the circle. They gave me a diameter. So if the diameter is 14, I know that the radius is 7 centimeters. So that's the one I'm going to be using here. I'm going to write pi times 7 centimeters squared. Which means I'm going to go 7 times 7, which is 49. I'm going to bring down the pi. And you're going to go centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters squared. This would be a perfect exact answer, except... We're going to round this, okay? So we want an approximate answer, which means I need to change that pi into 3.14. So I'm going to write that the area of the circle is approximately 49 times 3.14 centimeters squared. So that means the area of the circle is approximately, let's see, 49. Uh, 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 there you go. Sorry, my calculator was acting weird. 49 times 3.14, hit enter, and I get 153.86 centimeter squared. What did I just find? Well, I found the area of the bottom. And now that I know the area of the bottom is 153.86, I'm going to go ahead and substitute it right here, which means V equals parentheses 153.86 centimeter squared times the height of the figure. The height of the figure is from the top to the bottom, which means it's got to be eight centimeters right here. So I just have to multiply these numbers. 153.86 times 8. The answer I get is 1,230.88 centimeters squared times centimeters. That gives me centimeters cubed. And I am done with this problem. So hopefully you're finding that it's not too bad um, doing these problems, right? Like they're, they're pretty straightforward as long as you're using the formula correctly and you know your formulas from yesterday, right? We still need to know these top three formulas up there. 
because it, depending on the shape, you're either going to use the first formula, second formula, or the third formula. You're going to substitute that in right here on the side. Okay. All right, we're down to our last one, and this is where it does get a little bit tricky. I want to find the volume of this triangular prism. But remember, in order for us to do this, the bottom and the top shapes must match. And right now they don't. So what we need to do is kind of like in our head, we have to realize like if I were to rotate this thing, right? Kind of like tilt it so that it looks like this. Then you would have a triangle on the bottom and you would have a triangle on the top and those would match. So I know there's a rectangle on the bottom um, the way it was originally laid out, but you need to like mentally flip that figure so that the top and bottom shapes match. And I get in this case, a triangle on the top and a triangle on the bottom. Um, just because it's so kind of weird to uh, maneuver like this, I'm gonna flip it back. But just understand when I say my bottom shape, I really mean this shape right here. Because mentally I'm rotating that triangle. By the way, you should be picturing this as a ramp. Like, Picture there's someone up here on the top of a ramp, and then they're going to go ahead and go down the ramp and slide on this way, okay? So it's like a triangular ramp that we're looking at. Uh, obviously, if you have a ramp, there's a rectangle on the bottom, and then just a, like an edge on top, and we don't want that because we need the top and the bottom shapes to match. That's why we're taking that ramp, putting it on side, so that the triangles match top and bottom, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start using the formula. V equals area of the bottom times the height. I need some side work. Since I'm rotating this thing, my shape on the bottom is a triangle. So I'm going to say that the area of the triangle is equal to base times height divided by two. My base and my height for my triangle are going to be the ones that are touching the 90 degrees. So it's going to be the five. And the mistake would be to say it's the 10, but notice that the 10 is not part of the triangle. So it's going to actually be the 12. The 12 is part of the triangle and it's touching the 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and write 5 yards times 12 yards divided by 2. Sorry for the small writing. I'll try to zoom in so you can kind of see it. 5 yards times 12 yards divided by 2. That means the area of the triangle is equal to 60 yards squared divided by 2 which means the area of that triangle must be 30 yards squared. That means I can go back over here and say that the volume is equal to parentheses 30 yards squared. As far as the height, the height is the thing that measures up and down, but remember we're taking this and we're rotating it. So I want to go from the top bottom triangle to the top triangle, which means my height is actually going to be this number right here, which is going to be that 10. Okay, because again, we're rotating that figure, and now you have a triangle on the bottom and a triangle on the top. So 10 yards is going to be the height of that prism. That means my volume is going to be 30 times 10, which is 300, and then yards squared times yards, which is going to be yards cubed. All right, that's all the notes we have for today. Um, that should conclude the notes for here. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask.